Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday or Tech Talk Monday as it is to Peggy George um, over in the United States. I'm Anne Merchant and I'm the moderator of Tech Talk Tuesday. Several, I teach in a small rural school in country western Victoria. I teach ICT from years 4 right through to year 12. And I think it was about 12 months ago, all I heard my students talking about was Minecraft. And that sort of piqued my interest. And then I started to see people talking about it on Twitter. I joined a games MOOC uh, so that I can learn a lot more about using games in learning. I had an elective for the last six months of last year called Gamification of Learning. So I've experimented with a little bit. Stephen has been extremely helpful to me and I'm really looking forward to working with him further on this game that really has the kids thoroughly engaged. So a big warm welcome to Stephen. So we'll give you a virtual round of applause. Thank you for taking the time to present to us today. And I'm going to let Stephen, no maybe Peggy, you're next on the list. If you have a microphone, we'll just very quickly introduce ourselves, what our interest is in learning, and Amy, if you might just type in the chat, if you don't have a microphone available, where are you from and what's your interest in education? So Peggy, over to you, then Stephen, and then Karen if she's got a mic. Thank you. Well, I'm happy to introduce myself. My name is Peggy George, and I am actually a retired elementary school principal um, and a, a university pre-service instructor. And since my retirement, I have been actively involved in lots of online communities and social media, social networking, um, helping teachers learn to use technology in their classrooms. And I had a wonderful day today. I got to go to a classroom and teach some fifth graders about how to use live binders. And the exciting thing is that these fifth graders are learning so that they can teach their teachers how to use live binders. So it's been a great day. I take it that's my turn now. I'm uh, Stephen Elford. I'm a teacher in a secondary school in Northern Victoria. Oh, excuse me, in Northern Victoria. Um, I teach mainly maths and science uh, up to senior biology. Um, I've been playing around with Minecraft in the classroom for about 18 months now um, and playing Minecraft itself for probably over three years. Um, that's pretty much it, unless anyone's got any questions. Amy. Oh, wow. That is exciting. Um, so, Karen, do you have a microphone? That's all right. I'll keep talking then. Um, so this Stephen, just before, you, before you do, maybe Karen and Amy, well, Amy put in the chat where she was from and her interest, which I think is fabulous. Um, Karen, can you just write in the chat where you're from and what your interest is. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to formally introduce Stephen again. Thanks, Stephen. And we'll let you take over uh, control of the presentation. As questions come in the chat, if you feel able to, just please answer them then and there. If people really want to ask a question with the mic, um, if you wouldn't mind just raising your hand and then we'll get you to ask the question with the microphone. OK, Stephen, over to you. Okay, do we want to keep video going for a little while? Has everyone got good enough internet for that? Um, otherwise, I can get Stay rid of it if you would like. Stephen, I think we might drop it because once you start app sharing, we're going to be pulling on big bands with. So as much as yep. we'd love to see you, um, we might just leave it for now. Thanks. Yep, no worries. Um, so 
my focus for the last 18 months has been bringing Minecraft into real curriculum. Um, so I, I, I don't just play Minecraft. A lot of, a lot of teachers that I, I speak to globally actually use Minecraft as a play. Um, they just let the students play and the learning comes along with it. So you get your digital citizenship and, and your social learning stuff happening along there. Um, what I've been trying to do over the last 18 months is really tie it into hard curriculum links. So the first slide here says, um, so it's just a, a bit of a poll, so have you actually used Minecraft? So have you actually played the game Minecraft at all? Um, so to do that you just click on the little button above your name and respond yes or no. Um, so we've got Peggy saying no, um, Karen says no, and Amy's lost sound, so <laughs> that's okay. Um, and a little bit, okay, awesome. So I know Anne has because we've been talking about collaborating on a server. So that's awesome, thank you for that. So a bit of a background on what Minecraft does for me in a classroom. Um, oh, thanks Anne. Um, I've found that students want to do this. No matter what I set task-wise in that, in, in this game, students want to do it. And I've set tasks that uh, serious learning and the students have stayed focused on them more than I've ever seen students stay focused before in, in, my, in my teaching career of 10 or so years. So I had students working solidly for an hour and a half, these are year 8 students, sorry no year 7 students last year, working solidly for an hour and a half that I never would have got out of them in a, in a standard formal classroom. Um, and it, it is playful learning. Um, I, I find that the students really enjoy it and it is fun to do and it's a great opportunity to do modelling in 3D which is something new I'm heading into now and, and using the, the things that we create in Minecraft and printing them in real life. Um, that's probably not following me, there we go. Um, so yeah. So. In terms of Minecraft, the benefits of Minecraft EDU are slightly different to the benefits of Minecraft in a school situation, I think. So Minecraft EDU has an easy install um, in Victoria, we're behind a pretty firm and fast firewall, so we can't easily install Minecraft on our computers. So Minecraft EDU allows us around um, around the firewall as such, and you can even do a network install now. And the server management is um, what I wanted to talk about first. So I'm going to start app sharing. So this here is a remote desktop connection to my um, Minecraft server machine. Um, so this shows you the server tool. So when you start a Minecraft server, you get options for creating um, new worlds or bringing worlds down from online um, and world templates and things like that. So I've got some saved worlds here that we'll be touring through later and I've just lost my mouse. Where's it gone? There it is. I've really lost my mouse. Um, Otherwise, oh, you can stop the app share coming again. Are you right? Have no, you I've got, I've, yeah, I've got it back now, I think. Oh, no, I do lose it. Okay, yeah, I'm going to have to stop the app share. Peggy is the Mac expert, so you're lucky we've got Peggy here in case things do go a bit early. Um, let's start that again. There we go. So if I click it, there we go. So. Yeah, we've got a tutorial world that's included with Minecraft EDU that runs the kids, or I shouldn't call them kids, runs the students, or teachers for that matter, through how to actually navigate the game, so how to move, how to build, um, and all that sort of stuff. So what I might do is I might start up one world. So starting a world is as simple as a click of a button, basically. So even if you want to create a new world, I hope this is updating quick enough. You can have all of these options for generating worlds and then that world starts with the click of a button. So if I start my animal cell map, so we hit go and 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 after a little bit of time because it is quite a big map, hopefully the server will be up and running. And you've got a question. Yes, Stephen, sorry, I was checking the chat. Did you tell us where we go to be able to download this software or how do other people um, get to get it onto their 
server? Is there a cost involved, etc.? Um, I haven't said that yet. I was going to say that later. Um, but yes, there is a cost to this software. It's for the actual software itself. It's forty-one dollars, and that's it. So that allows you to run one server for up to one hundred people um, or one hundred students at the one time. So what? that gives you is access to all of the Minecraft Edu features for $41 up front, which I think is an absolute steal and I keep telling them that. So um, it's just amazing. So minecraftedu.com is where you go to find that and there is um, that is written down on a, on a later slide. Um, so this is one of the great things about the Minecraft Edu package is you get this server tool where you can manage things in the game. So you can turn on students are able to build, you can turn off night, you can set up the world and really tweak the world to the way you want it to be um, and you can do all of that um, on the fly so you can change it if you want one lesson to be um, you know, where students don't have to fight monsters and don't have to worry about it getting dark and you can do that and the next lesson you can turn it all back on so, so it's a really flexible um, system like that. Uh, I think that was it from the server side of things. So if we stop that, go back to the whiteboard. Um, so the student names is something that you can't actually get with a, a normal Minecraft install, um, because, well, at least in Victoria, I should say, because of the proxy setup and the firewall setup, we can't actually authenticate to Minecraft and get proper names. So this allows us to have names carry through and the student's equipment carries through and where they are in the world carries through and everything as well, which we couldn't actually have in, in the Victorian system um, within the school. Um, the teacher menu in-game, I'll show you that later when we're touring um, some of my maps. And it also has control blocks as an add-on to normal Minecraft so you can control where students can go, where they can build, where they can't build and, and things like that. Um, the other one thing that I think is a really good, I should be using my pointer, um, a really good um, thing to have is, is that edu on the end of Minecraft allows you to create a really clear distinction between playing Minecraft and learning with Minecraft EDU and my kids, my students really get that so they understand that when we use Minecraft EDU in the classroom we're using it to, to do some real serious learning rather than just playing a game um, and they don't seem to mind that at all. Any questions about any of that stuff or any clarifi clarification anyone would like? Stephen, while people are thinking about that, Peggy asked, can students download Minecraft EDU at home? Um, not yet. Um, there is the the there is a premium edition, but I don't think it's officially for sale yet. Um, and that costs, I think, seven US dollars um, for the license for that, and that gets you all of the same package except for instead of running a server of up to 100 you can run a server of up to 10. Um, so there's only that restriction on it and it only costs $7. So in the future if I want students to be able to access my servers and, and, and that sort of stuff from home or from their personal computers I would be buying or, or getting them to buy the, the premium version of Minecraft EDU so that they could do so. Any other questions anyone's got? Oh, yep, and go for it. Uh, Stephen, another one in the chat from Peggy. Can the students articulate what they are learning or is that important? Um, I found that the students, look, it's very easy to get distracted, um, but generally speaking, they do the learning um, and, and are able to articulate, um, not necessarily better, um, but at least the same as. Uh, running a, a standard class and my chat's not updating. Uh, yes, now it is. Um, so they they can articulate what they're learning, but it, it really it's not better. I don't think all the time. Sometimes it probably is in terms of understanding. Um, they can. I've been getting recently students to write their responses in books in game. Um, or I have in the past this sort of I've approached this with a blended approach so they'll have a booklet outside of game that they're writing in as they go through and again I'll talk about that when we get to touring some of my maps. Um, I use Minecraft with students varying from what's that 
12 to 13, um, up to, I think I've, I've trialled it with about 17 year olds. Um, so, and that, there were some issues there when, because we were using test versions and of, of the mod and everything. So there were some issues there that meant the 17 year olds didn't enjoy it as much. Um, so, but the year seven and eights that I work with this year really do enjoy it. Um, Peggy, the books in the game, are, they're, they're a relatively new addition. They've been added uh, probably about oh, less than 12 months ago um, and that's just to, um, that's in normal Minecraft, it's not just in Minecraft EDU and it allows students to write, um, I think, I'm not sure how many characters or if it's limited to characters at all, but they can actually write books in the game and then they can either keep that as an editable book so they can go back and edit it some more or they can make it a, a published book where they can hand in their published work. Um, so normally I get the students to write their results for the experiment we're doing or whatever discussion we want them to have in one of the books, sign it so that that prevents it from being edited again and submit it to me. Karen, yes, for sure. Um, there are the actually the co-creator of this particular version of Minecraft um, uses it with grade two and three over in the US somewhere. Um, Joel Levin, um, aka the Minecraft teacher, um, uses it with that and and quite effectively. Um, I I haven't, but yeah, I see no reason why you couldn't use it with students under for sure, um, but you put certain limitations on, on how it works so you probably wouldn't have them trying to combat monsters um, and things like that. So, but it's um, yeah, definitely, definitely a yes there and, and yes they are, they're more than happy to, to do that because the way I've set up my tasks at the moment is that they're playing while they're writing. So again, I'll show you when we get to, the, to some of the maps, but I do know some teachers who have got the students to write a survival journal. So they'll actually go in and just play Minecraft, but at each night, so when it turns night each, each time, they actually have to write in their journal as to what they did for the day and why they did it and, and what they would do different, stuff like that. Very much so. So Minecraft Edu allows you to turn off the night time if you don't want to be working in night time and you can actually turn off the monsters as well so that they, they don't create havoc. All right. So what can you do? Now I just Google image searched um, Minecraft Edu or Minecraft builds and this was four things that I thought you know, look pretty cool. All of these, all of these pictures were made in Minecraft um, by placing block on block on block and things like that. So really, the only limit to this is the imagination of you, or even the imagination of students. All right, because it th is a completely open sandbox game, so students can literally do anything they want. And chances are, if you're dealing with you know, young teens, then they probably already know um, more about Minecraft than you. Peggy, the, are you talking about the pony? That would probably take a couple of hours. Um, the Star Trek, uh, the Enterprise build probably would have taken months. Um, so um, so this, this probably would take a few hours, this would take months this would probably take one person a few months as well and this would probably get done in a few hours. So I'll show you <laughs> some of the amazing things that teachers are doing with this software um, and then you can definitely say wow. So this next slide here is a map created by Eric Walker who's a Minecraft educator. Um, he uses Minecraft EDU. So what Eric's done is all of these builds and buildings you can see have actually been created by other people and what he's done is he's just copied them because a lot of people share what they create for free on the web. You just pull them in and you can actually import them into your world using a bit of external software and then he's just smoothed it out and made a learning task out of it. So this is the wonderful world of humanities. Um, and you can see he's got 49 at this stage different locations where there are um, different um, ancient civilizations or different geographical, um, I can't think of the word right now, geographical stuff. Um, so things like ravines and things like that. So and then there's build areas for students. So he's got um, 
tasks where students can go and, and build, for example, build as a, a senior in inspirational school. So they had to go and research what the schools in Athens were like at the time and try and replicate that in Minecraft. So that's probably the biggest wow factor of Minecraft EDU that I'm aware of. Um, uh, I was going to, uh, I could have walked you through this world, but to be honest, I couldn't, I couldn't do it justice in, in the hour we have. Realistically, um, what, you sh what, you, what I recommend you do is if you, even, even if you have Minecraft, you can download this map and put it in. You won't get, um, you won't get all the Minecraft edu blocks and all of that sort of stuff, but you will get a, 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 an idea of the scope of this um, because it is an enormous, enormous world. So, um, and I'll come back and talk through this because I, this, this is what the first thing I show teachers any time I'm introducing Minecraft into the classroom and Minecraft edu um, is, yeah, it's just such a wow thing, this map. Um, Peggy, I, I think it's different to, to Second Life. Um, and Justin, how much of the value is motivation for students? A lot of the value for Minecraft comes from motivation. They want to be in the world. They want to be doing stuff. So if they want to build the, that school I was mentioning, then they need to go and research it. Again, I haven't used this world. This is just a world that I, I know of, and, and it is an amazing world that I thought I would share. Um, but in, in my experience, the students um, are more than happy to go and do a bit of research to build an accurate representation of a Mayan temple or an accurate representation of a um, of an Egyptian pyramid or the Sphinx or something like that. So in the past, I haven't had issues with saying to the, saying to the students, okay, go and do that and come back. Um, it's not how I use it in my classroom. Um, myself, I tend to do a bit more focused tasks on what I have the students, what I want the students to do, or they've already got the information they need um, to do the building I want them to do or whatnot. But yeah, it's just, this, this is the sort of scope you're looking at or that you can get if you're willing to put in the time. Um, so it's just, yeah, one of the, one of the biggest wow factors of, of Minecraft EDU. All right. In that particular, sorry, I'll go back. In that particular map, John, um, again, I haven't used it. I just know of this map. Um, but there are the, the whole, the overarching learning focus is, I guess, learning about um, ancient civilizations and touring those ancient civilizations. Um, so I know the teacher, that Eric, that does use this is at an international school and his students are on this server doing stuff inside and outside of school time. So um, in, yeah, there are specific tasks in there, but overall the overarching um, learning intention as such is to um, explore and, and learn about ancient civilizations. Peggy, I don't use Minecraft all the time. Um, I use, I personally use it as a tool when it's appropriate, um, and I have been struggling with required curriculum. Um, if people, anyone here has been reading my blog, um, the required curriculum does sometimes irritate me in terms of what I want to get done, but what I do with Minecraft is use it to supplement my teaching of the curriculum. So instead of teaching, um, and I'll show you, I'll show you that in a minute, John, when we go through some of my worlds. Um, so I'll, and well, let, let's just go into, let's just go into my animal cell. So normally, I don't know how well you can see this, but normally I would draw a picture like this on my whiteboard in similar colours to this and get students to copy it down. Um, and that's how I normally would teach about cells and the organelles. Um, Peggy, I haven't got there yet. There is no reason why they couldn't. Um, there is no reason. I had some students last year in another class, not mine, um, actually created a board game, like a Scrabble game in, in Minecraft for other students to play. So there's no reason students can't create um, worlds or even small challenges for each other in that game. Um, yeah, they did. They really loved it. They got to make their own custom texture pack and, and they got to go in there and, and build this, build what they envisioned in their head, which is one of the amazing things about Minecraft itself as a not only as a game but as, as a tool it is actually amazingly easy to get 
uh, a design, a three-dimensional design from your head into into the computer, and then even like now you're able to actually take the designs that you build in Minecraft and send them to a 3D printer and get them printed out in real life. So it's getting sort of pretty amazing stuff. So I'm going to start app sharing again and I need to, so I'm going to share, so I've loaded up Minecraft EDU. So is that, Peggy, you asking a question there? If you are, yes, you can. I've had students who haven't played games before and they have um, learned how to navigate the game. They will never be awesome, epic builders, but with practice, of course, they would. But I think, seriously, yes, it is. It is as far as a 3D design tool goes, it's probably the easiest 3D design tool you can get a hold of, if that makes sense. So I'm assuming you guys are now seeing my Minecraft EDU screen. So what this allows you to do is you can have uh, any name you want. So um, I personally am always Elfie. Um, and then we go into a multiplayer world and then we join my animal cell server. So I'm going to join as a teacher. So you can see there are two ways you can join. You can join as a student. I should slow down to make sure it's updating in time, or you can join as a teacher. So if I join as a teacher, it gives me options um, that students don't have, like access to the teacher menu and things like that. So depending on how quick the, your video is updating, you might have seen that this looked different when I first logged in. And that's because um, it's the server has actually got it what's called a custom texture pack, so it looks it looks every it makes everything look different. So in here at the moment, so this actually is a Minecraft world. It doesn't look anything like a Minecraft world though. So I should. So. Uh, Uh, I can't do it. Technical issues. Oh. Ah, that's why. So, when I first brought students into this world, they started up here. So this is a cell, and that animal cell that you saw in the picture on the whiteboard um, that I created block by block for my students to go in and tour. So I'm not sure how the quality is, but this, this particular build probably took me six months over six months on and off. Um, so yeah, I'm just standing at a platform now, and so I'll just wait for it to load up for everyone. Um, so this was basically set up. I have a booklet that goes along with this, um, and there are questions based on the information that I've given the students in this map. So the students, um, the students go through and tour the cells. So they, they go through and visit each of the organelles and they go through and, and read the information that I've placed in there about the organelles. So what I might do is while we're here, I might talk about the in-game menu. So the in-game menu as a teacher allows you to control not only yourself, students, the way the students interact with the world, the way the world interacts with students, and also allows you access to some really powerful building tools. So this first screen I assume you're all seeing now is my personal settings so I can make myself um, move myself around, make myself move faster, make myself invisible, make myself creative. So I probably should clarify that there is two modes of building in Minecraft, there is the survival mode where you have to create tools to break things and things break slowly, and then there is creative mode where it's everything is instant break and you have access to as many blocks as you would like. So that allows you to control yourself 
and then you get the same settings in here as you do on the server panel. So you can be in game and be able to adjust game settings and um, stop students from moving or stop students from, from talking in game. Um, yes, Peggy, teleporting is to, uh, flying to another location. Um, so all of these settings can be changed on the fly. So you'll notice if, if it updated quick enough that I had to turn the day-night cycle on to get the visual that I wanted for the students when I came in here. So all of these things um, normally would take command line things in a normal Minecraft server. So you need to know the command lines to do it and you've got to type it. Whereas in here, it's just a click of a button. Um, another really cool thing is you can set assignments. So my assignment for this particular map when I did it with the students was to explore the organelles of a cell so that when the students log in, they get that learning intention or that learning goal that I think you were looking for before, John. The goal of this lesson was to go in, explore the organelles of the cell and, and get, some of the, get some information out of that and produce uh, um, the, the answers to the questions that I, deliver, that I put in the booklet. Is there a Minecraft curriculum? Um, uh, can you clarify that a bit for me, as in learning the game Minecraft or a curriculum that is accessible by Minecraft? And while you clarify that, I'll go on to the next tab. The other thing that you are allowed to do as a teacher in Minecraft is teleport students to you or teleport yourself to students, which again, in a normal Minecraft, is, is command line options and, and not, as, not as easy as a click of a button. So if I had more people in here, I could just click their name and teleport myself to them. So if a student needs help and I can hear them saying, Mr. Alfred, I need help, um, I can then just click on their name and take myself to them. Peggy. There is coming soon, and it's in the works at the moment, a map sharing tool. So basically, Minecraft Edu people can save their worlds, um, upload them to Minecraft Edu servers, and anyone can pull them down and use them through Minecraft EDU. So that was the online world templates that was in the server tool. Um, so that is coming. Um, there are Google groups and things like that that I will, I will give you directions to a bit later uh, where you can go and ask people for help or for suggestions and things like that. Um, and most of my students use first names. I've had students in the past use first and last names. Um, but because I record everything I do in my classes for reflection and publishing to YouTube, um, of course I encourage them not to use their full names more so than use them. Um, but I generally like them to use their first names so that I know who they are. Um, and I, it's, it's easy to go and, and find their name when I want them. Um, I have had some people do use nicknames. Um, but again, their nicknames I already know, so they might be Magic29 and I know who Magic29 is. Um, for recording, because I'm on a Mac, I use ScreenFlow. Um, there is, if you're a Victorian educator, there is debut video capture software included on the EduStar image, um, and that does work effectively because I've had students recording their screens and doing um, tours of houses that they built. Um, so to debut video capture, um, I'm not sure of free software out there for video recording. I know Jing will allow you to do five minutes, but I'm not sure of the quality um, for screencasting. And then there's screencast.com as well, I think. But again, I think that's limited to five minutes or so. So I'll snag it. That's the new one, yeah. So yes, for me on a Mac, ScreenFlow, from what I hear just generally on, on people I talk to, via YouTube and things like that. If you're on Windows, FRAPS, F-R-A-P-S, I'll put it in the chat, is the way to go. Um, but again, I'm pretty sure that's paid software and I haven't actually used that. So, oh, there you go, Peggy's giving us a heap of screencast tools. Awesome, thanks Peggy. Um, so as well as teleporting, um, you can teleport to specific locations. So one of the blocks included as an add-on to Minecraft EDU is a teleport block so or a teleport station block so that you can teleport to these stations. So for example, if I click on this in this button here called Golgi, I will go moving to a new location. If you guys can't see that, it comes up and says moving to a new location and all of a sudden I am teleported into the cell and I'm standing here looking at a Golgi apparatus right in front of me. 
So then I would get the students with their booklet, they would come and, and click on this and they get the information that I put in there. So this, what you're looking at now is another add-on block. Um, this is a um, information block, so this can have unlimited amounts of text in it. So you can just add more and more pages. So I only used a shorter amount of text, um, but the whole idea here was to, I mean this is how this is what I stressed to the students. This is how I see a cell in my head. Um, so they might they might end up imagining a cell different to me, but this is how I see a cell in my head, um, down to the colours and everything. I, I don't know why, but mitochondria have always been orange for me. Um, so um, yeah, any other questions about this? Because I would like to show you some of the other. Um, curriculum applications I've used for this. What is a cell? This is an animal cell, so it's the basic unit of life. Um, so these are inside you as, as such, Peggy. So the whole idea here was to get them learning information in a better way than just reading a textbook and trying to imagine it themselves. So I've customised the texture pack and made it look the way I want it to look and then built the cell um, from the ground up um, based on a, a, an idea of what's in my head. <laughs> um, John, yes and no. Yes, I am using it to foster engagement because it is a very powerful tool to engage the students in tasks, but I'm also using it to bring in real curriculum. So I'm not just using it to for the sake of it, I'm actually using it for for specific learning and the next map I show you will actually explain that to you. So what I might do, I might jump over onto the server and load up the next map. So any questions while I do that? Sorry, I'm being very quiet. I'm just waiting for the server to start up. And I'll join as a teacher again. So I am assuming you guys are here with me now. So this was one of my science classes. Um, I'll just get rid of that so it's not distracting me. So this is one of my this was an experiment on gravity. So we did a lot of um, background work on, on forces and gravity in my science classroom and then we went and performed um, experiments on gravity in Minecraft. So there was a backstory for this one um, where some scientists in Minecraft had found out that uh, gravity in Minecraft was not real and for some unfortunate accident happened where all that research was lost and all those scientists accidentally perished and it was the job of the students to step up so they were trainee scientists and it was their job to step up and do the research again and perform those experiments and try and come to the conclusion and work out how, um, how it is that Minecraft gravity is, is not the same as, as real gravity as such. So. The, the aim of the students, the goal of the students here was to actually explore gravity, do calculations on, on gravity in Minecraft and then reflect on the results they got to come up with a conclusion, to draw a conclusion as to why the gravity in the game did not relate to the gravity that we, that we learnt about in class. So does that make it a bit more um, educational for you, John, in terms of it's not just engagement, it's it's actually there was real learning behind this. Good. So for this particular map, there are this is one station that we're looking at now. So there are six of these stations dotted around and the students access them through those teleport blocks and way up in the sky. if I make myself creative. Um, way up in the sky there is another type of block I would like to explain to you. Um, so I'll just fly all the way up. So up here 
and I put it way up in the sky so it didn't interfere with the immersion of the students as such because I want them to be, um, it was a role play so it was their job to be the scientist and um, do do the experiments. So for this, this is a border block so you can see um, this encloses the test station. So what it means is that students, once they go in, inside this square um, that you can see here, they actually can't get out. So they can't run away and get too distracted from the task at hand. They need to stay within this square boundary and do those tests for me. Um, so that's one of the extra blocks. I'll show you all of them now. Um, and no, everything is protected in here. So for example, in this particular world, any of my builds are actually have these blocks underneath them, which are called build disallow blocks. So students actually can't build underneath them. Um, and newbies, look, you have them, but they catch up pretty quick. Um, I think the, the generation of students I'm teaching now pick up the WASD and mouse much quicker than I ever did um, and so they pick it up pretty pretty quick on how to move and the tutorial world included with Minecraft Edu is amazing for teaching students how to navigate the world and, and use the tools available to them in the world. Um, no, you can do that for them so you can add these build disallow blocks underneath their building once they're finished but then they wouldn't be able to change it. So there's build disallow blocks, there's build allow blocks, there's those information blocks which you can write on, information signs which are just for drawing attention, there's these border blocks which we've just talked about, there's the spawn block which allows you to actually set the, the, the location where students come into the world. So the first time students log into the world they appear on the block that you place if you place it otherwise they appear at what's called world spawn. Um, ah, Karen that's, that's much longer than an hour. <laughs> um, basically and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to address this later, the, the way that these things come about is I play Minecraft, I have a really good understanding of the, the game Minecraft, so when something comes up in my class that, that fits or that I know I can make fit into the game Minecraft, I will spend however long it takes, like six months, creating a, 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 a map that the students can use to do it. Um, this particular map probably took me eight to ten hours to create. Um, but again, I can use it again and again and again because we always cover gravity with Year 7 or Year 8 um, for years to come and other teachers can actually pick it up from my school and use it and globally as well when, when we get that map sharing up. So as far as instructions for students, if you would like to see that, Karen, I will point you to my YouTube channel later. Um, so there are live video recordings of my classes from in-game um, there that show you what I do, how I do it and, and the process that happens in my class. Peggy, um, what you're looking at here is a map. So the animal cell that you saw is a different map. So a map is like a, it's, it's really confusing because maps and worlds get used, the words map and world get in, used interchangeably um, in in Minecraft. A Minecraft world is sometimes called a map, um, but each world is is a separate map. Oh, I can't explain this properly. Am I making sense or am I completely confusing you now? All right, so okay, let me put it like this. Minecraft will generate a world, so when I start up a server or I start up a game, um, it'll it'll load up a world. And I term a map as something that I have probably edited. So Minecraft generates the world, I will actually edit that world and it becomes a map of mine as such. So it becomes something of mine. Does that make more sense? Good. Um, so yes, this is one activity and I quickly would like to show you my latest and greatest tool. Um, so I might disconnect from the server and, and restart um, a different uh, map up. So this 
the latest version of Minecraft EDU, um, I know you haven't used, a lot of you haven't really used Minecraft before, but the latest version of Minecraft EDU actually allows you to put certain modifications in called mods. So the map I'm about to show you, for example, has um, two of those mods in it. So there are two modifications added to this particular Minecraft version that allow me to do extra with the students. So I want to go, where is it? Over here. So this, I know I'm moving fast and it's probably not updating enough for you. Um, I'll just get rid of that so I can see the chat. So this is what I'm terming Mathlandia. It's a really nerdy, stupid name, but the kids don't seem to mind. Basically, this is a world I will use with my students. Definitely, Peggy, um, you need to be comfortable with Minecraft as a tool um, before, uh, yeah, really, you need to be relatively comfortable with Minecraft before you can create your own um, learning tasks as such for it. Um, but if you're willing to give it a try with other people's learning tasks, then there are people out there that will, will offer you theirs. So if you, for example, you wanted to use my, um, my Mathlandia world, the one I'm showing you now, I would more than, happy, more than happily give it to you and share it with you. So this person you're seeing in front of me, whose name is Jessica, is actually a, an NPC that I've put in there. This is a, a non-player character. So this is a computer controlled character that the students can interact with. So that's one modification that, that we have here. So the whole idea behind this is this is what I'm calling a substantive world or a persistent world. So the students can come in here and play at lunchtime and at recess and actually play Minecraft. But during class, if I fly over here quickly, there are specific quests for the students to do that um, have learning foci. So the one, the, I've only run this for one session with students so far. Um, so Philip here, when your video catches up, is the one, this the one quest in this game at the moment. And the quest was based on experimental and theoretical probability. So the idea was, they would have to go and complete some experiments um, and try and work out the difference between experimental and theoretical probability, write some reflections on it um, and deliver them back to deliver them back to Philip here to get their reward. So yes, they do and they do the experience with, within Minecraft. So this is an example of um, one student's results from what looks like one test. So he did the gold station and these are the results he got. So what I'll do, I'll put that back so that we don't lose it and I'll go and show you the actual quest. So this little book here, I'll wait for your video to catch up. This little book here is um, a, a mod called Mistcraft. So it allows me to have many different worlds so without interfering with the world the students build in. So I can go and do um, quests and things in other worlds and not interfere with what the students are actually building. So if I go to this new world, the first thing you notice is it looks completely different. The sky is green and we're locked in this area here. We can't get anywhere else in here because this is the area I want them to do their experiments. So we've got more um, NPCs or, or people that they can have a chat to and, in, and interact with, just again to add to the immersion. Um, but the experiment was they had to, in their book, um, I'll just wait for that to catch up. So in their book, they had to press a button nine times. So for the light blue station here, they had to press a button nine times and record what dropped out each time. So if I press the button, you'll see a pig dropped and I'm not sure if your video will keep up. Um, so Anne, um, the reason this is set up the way it is, there are 30 different stations. So if the students, and there are six, six repeats of each station, so if students get in each other's way, um, they can actually just go and find another station. So yeah, basically, click the button, another pig, they would write that down in their book. So for example, if I delete the text that's in this one, we're at the light blue station, so I expected the students to go light blue station, 
I can't write today, test one was pig, test two was also a pig. And then they would keep going until they did it nine times and we got another pig. So we'd write test three pig. So what they would do is they would go around and they would complete um, five different tests. So there are five different colours um, of different tests that they had to do. And then once they'd done that and I had checked their notes so far, um, they had to throw it to me and so they would throw the book on the ground, I would pick it up and check it. Um, or they're normally pretty good at just doing what they need to do or I can go around to their computers, they can open up their book and I can have a quick look through it. Um, so that's how I did that one. So once they did those five tests, they got to come up here to the upper platform, which is the mystery test. So this is where we start tying in the, the, the connection between theoretical and experimental probability. So up here, I should just let it sit. Um, do you, so no, I do that while they're in Minecraft. So it's, it's mad, it is absolutely mad, but it's actually really enjoyable as well. Um, I have taken results, so for example the Gravity Lab one, I took their results and I compiled them because as, as part of the role play I was the head scientist or, or whatever it was, so it was my job to compile their results and, and then feed them back to the students. But I did it in class and again you can see in my video there's a video of this particular lesson up as well, um, how hectic it got. Um, I did cut out a lot of the bits where I wasn't at my computer and I was just standing still. But yeah, it's it's really, it is a lot of fun. So up here, the, the test doesn't have a, they don't know the theoretical probability. So they have to do their experiment. Um, hang on a second, Karen, I'll just finish talking about this and I'll answer that. Um, so students did the experiment, they recorded their results and then they put forth a, a theory as to what the theoretical probability was and it was then that they got their reward. So the students not only get to play Minecraft while they're learning as such or do a learning task in Minecraft, they actually also get, when they go back to Philip, they actually get a reward. So they, for example, the first reward I gave them was a whole heap of torches, um, a whole heap of wood and a whole heap of stone so they could start building their houses as well as a full set of armour and swords so that they could defend themselves. So the idea being that I can tie these rewards for doing the quests into what they need for when they're playing Minecraft. Um, back to Karen's question, the gravity lab map that I showed you previously was actually, has actually been picked up by um, Jonas Lindel in Sweden um, and the theory behind it has been picked up by um, quite a few people around the world. Um, but basically, yes, it has been um, picked up and shared um, and they were supposed to be writing um, responses to how it all worked and everything on a blog somewhere but I haven't seen that yet. Because the school years don't line up between Australia and Sweden, um, the students I did the Gravity Lab with last year are now in year eight. Um, so while I'm happy to talk to them about it, um, Jonas hasn't contacted me with his details yet. But and yeah, and, and I think the idea of making this more like a role play is, is a really good way forward into tying Minecraft into the classroom. Um, but before we go, because I'm, I'm conscious of the time and, and people probably have things to do, um, there are ways of just doing simple activities. So one of, one of the most popular activities in terms of, of my YouTube channel um, and the first activity I did in Minecraft was just a five minute activity um, that took me five, minute, five minutes to build and the students 10 to 15 minutes to do but it gave a real depth of understanding. So these are like demonstrations in a, in, a, in a virtual world as such. So the first one the students had to be neurotransmitters. So I set up a little, knowing a bit about Minecraft, I set up a little um, system that would make it so that the students could act like neurotransmitters and I controlled when they could go and when they couldn't go so we could talk about how um, how neurotransmitters work and, and how the message doesn't always get sent if if you don't get enough neurotransmitter molecules sent across the synapse and stuff like that. So there's real learning behind it in a, a five minute activity to build, a 15 minute activity to complete and 
the other one which I'm about to do tomorrow afternoon is a solid liquid gas um, demonstration in Minecraft. Um, in real life, you can demonstrate solids, liquids and gases with students using the particle model by getting the students all to bunch together and hold hands and, and jiggle around a little bit and then they're a solid. And then if they spread out a little bit but they continue to hold hands, they're a liquid. And then if they can just roam freely around the room, then they're a gas. Now, what I did last year at about this time and I'm going to do again tomorrow is do that activity in Minecraft. So you jam all the students into a tight spot and then you do the best thing I've ever done, you set them all on fire. Um, and it doesn't freak the students out too much but you set them all on fire and <laughs> I thought that might get a bit of a response. Um, they, they gain heat and as they gain that heat, the wood around them um, disappears so that they go into a, a larger container and they can move around a little bit more. So that um, allows them to become a liquid and then you add more heat so you start burning things again and then that melts down or the, the, the wood that's containing them melts down and off they go, they're a gas, they're not contained anymore. So um, what I need to do quickly is stop that sharing, go back to the whiteboard. So, just quickly to sum up, how do you start? You've got to play. Um, I actually have a dedicated server with Minecraft Edu running for teachers around the world um, to join in and learn Minecraft, have a chat to other educators using it. So if you're interested in doing that, take note of my email and send me an email. You do have to have Minecraft EDU unfortunately, um, but that is available for purchase. Um, and yes, and they do learn within the world. So I've set up a mumble server so that people can log in and yes, chat. So you can either text chat or if you join the mumble server, you get the same sort of audio that you're getting here. You can actually talk to each other um, via microphone. And seriously, the best way to get started with Minecraft in the classroom is to, is to actually learn to play it. Um, at the moment, it's mostly America, um, Finland, uh, Canada, and I think that's about it at the moment. So how can you find help? Minecraftedu.com is where you go to buy the mod. So that's where you go to buy Minecraft EDU for schools. Um, there is a Google group here. Uh, there is, there are some translations in Minecraft Edu and um, I'm not sure. Yes, Peggy, you can, I think, um, send me an email at, at Stephen at minecraftedu.com and I'll get you in contact with Joel and I'm quite sure as an educator he would be more than happy to, to supply you with a copy of Minecraft EDU. Um, so this Google Groups here, thanks Anne for putting that in there if people want to follow it, um, is a really good spot to ask for help or even just go and introduce yourself and have a chat to other educators from around the world because that has got educators from everywhere. Um, and there are a lot of people on there that are really more than willing to help. So that YouTube channel there is my YouTube channel um, where I publish live lessons. So lessons that have, I've run at school, I've recorded, I've edited, I've published. Um, so you can see some of what happens in my classroom. So there's um, an animal cell one. So of the ones, so all of the ones I've talked about today, there are actually videos up there if you go and have a look for them. Minecraft Edu Elfid blogspot.com is my blog where I sometimes ramble about Minecraft, sometimes I ramble about other things and I'm starting to ramble a bit more about 3D printing so if you're interested in that, go for it. And Stephen at minecraftedu.com is something you can do to ask questions if you want. I'm more than happy to help. And Anne, I will shut up now. Oh, Stephen, no, I think we can, I hope you will come back again because this has been really fascinating. But it's just Karen is from Pakistan, so YouTube is blocked in her country. Do you put any of those videos up on an alternative channel at all, Stephen? No, I haven't. I hadn't even contemplated the fact that YouTube wasn't available all around the world. So, um, what was it? Karen, email me and I will sort out how I can get those videos to you if you would like to see them. Yes, yeah, so there's teacher tube. What about Vimeo, Karen? Which which um, 
video channels can you get in Pakistan? I know this is something we often forget that not everybody is privileged to access uh, the tools that we just take for granted. So Karen, you make sure you grab Stephen's email and get in contact. And maybe Karen could let you know which one she was really keen on looking at. Well, our time to sped along there, Stephen. So thank you so much. Let's give Stephen a, a clapping hand. Um, I think if you've had your students or seen them in Minecraft, it almost becomes addictive for them. But to be able to use Minecraft as the world or classroom in which they learn, Stephen, I think you've done some fantastic things to maths and science. I'm lucky, I teach technology, so sometimes I feel that I can justify them just plain. And they've learnt so much about citizenship and responsibility, sharing, mentoring. So to take it to that next step is just so good to see. Uh, just to let you all quickly know that in Victoria where I teach, we are about to have a two week autumn break. So there will be no Tech Talk Tuesday for the next two weeks. Uh, always looking for suggestions for term two and volunteers. So if you have any ideas or suggestions, I'd love to hear from you. And I think, <laughs> Peggy, I know it seems like we just started back to there. Amy, if you drop me your um, email address or if you send it to Stephen, I'll make sure that you get the recording link. So I don't know how you found out about this session. Okay, so I'll save the chat. So if you want to, please save the chat. So you go File, Save, Chat and save it um, as text. Uh, it also, the recording links are going to go back onto these three websites. Uh, unfortunately, some of that sort of disappears with time because the next post sort of replaces it or goes above it. But if you want to make sure you get the recording links, please give me your email address and we'll make sure that you do get it. So Stephen, thank you again. I hope you'll come back and do another session with us next term. Yeah, Amy, I found it in the chat. So I hope I don't forget. This is my email in case uh, I do forget because sometimes when well, we've got parent teacher interviews, end of term is always busy. Um, Stephen, I hope you come back and do another one on Minecraft and maybe one on 3D printing because that one fascinates me as well. Anyway, thank you everybody. I'm going to stop the recording now. Hope you'll come along to another Tech Talk Tuesday soon. And if maybe Stephen will stay in the room for another five minutes if you've got questions or if you want to save the chat, please do that. So I'll put the timer on. This room will stay open for five minutes, then it will close. So thanks again, Stephen, and thank you everyone for coming.